This podcast has been named a Common Sense Selection by Common Sense Media, recognized for its outstanding content for kids and families. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Season 4 of Once Upon a Crescent, a Muslim kids podcast. Dear kid listeners, these stories are just for you. Written and produced by me, your author and narrator, Mrs. Hashmi. Let's switch on our imaginations with today's story. Today's story is called A Share of Sugar. In a small village, there lived five neighbors. They were part of a yearly food trade and did each other one huge favor. That favor was the sharing of foods that they raised or grew. Everyone received a fair share, the whole village knew. It was fair because they all had the same amount of land to till and toil. They all reaped the harvest of their strong will and top-notch soil. Of the five neighbors, one was in charge of preparing butter and storing milk and eggs. The second one grew vegetables and roots, while the third grew many types of grain. The fourth neighbor harvested fruit, and only one neighbor grew just sugar cane. In this small village, whether you were growing potatoes, carrots, and peas, or rice, barley, and wheat, one thing always remained. The neighbors distributed their goods so everyone could eat a balanced feast. A feast with a four-course meal, some soup, salad, protein, and dessert. All were cooked and prepared with the food groups the neighbors brought forth. Each year, the neighbor with the sugarcane crop questioned his participation in this exchange. The sugar neighbor thought, If I hadn't given away so much sugar, maybe I could have baked a cake with the flour and eggs I just obtained. Maybe I could have made a sugary syrup and enjoyed a candied apple with my remains. Perhaps a sweet potato pie with the extra sugar from my sugar canes? If I had Each given year, away sugar so much sugar, sugar maybe I could have baked a cake filled with the flour and eggs and I just wondered secretly. Maybe I about could have what made a sugar if he syrup kept the sugar and enjoyed a candied apple with my remains. Perhaps so a sweet the potato passed, pie and the next with the time extra the sugar from my sugar, sugar cane neighbor. If I had given away doorstep. so much sugar, maybe I could have baked a cake to with the flour and eggs the I just obtained. Here is half of what I usually give. Hope that you all will make do and adjust your recipes too. The neighbors were puzzled and disappointed. This arrangement worked for everyone for years. Why did this sudden change in attitude appear? The sugar cane neighbor knew his sugar was super important to all the other recipes, so how could he just half his share? This all felt really unfair. But at last, the four neighbors made a do. They adjusted their recipes and meals because using only half of the sugar was definitely something new. The breads, breakfast muffins, and treats were not quite the same, nor were they sweet. But they ate it anyway, thinking at least they have some sort of treat. The next year, during the yearly food exchange, the sugar neighbor left another note on his doorstep. It read, Here is half of what I gave last year. Hope that you will all accept I'm making new things for me and can't just hand out sugar for free. The note had an exclamation mark at the end, a frowny face deeply etched and penned, and an angry squiggly mark as a signature on the corner of the note all bent. The neighbors shook their heads and stared at the sack. The sugar given had to be unpacked. They opened up the bag and dug in deep, but all that was given was barely a heap. 
The four neighbors sighed in despair. <sighs> they distributed the sugar amongst themselves and squinted at their little share. Something had to be done, the four neighbors discussed. They felt cheated and robbed, and it was all so unjust. Their feasts were no longer balanced. Harvest Day was no longer exciting. When one member of the group just stops participating, then the entire group has to make up for it, and it's just really so frustrating. The neighbors decided to express their thoughts and feelings. Who knows, maybe the sugar neighbor will change the way he sees things? So off they went to go have a chat. They stood there on their neighbor's welcome mat. There was no answer. Assalamu alaikum, may we come in? One neighbor called through the door, hoping for a sign to come in, but it was ignored. I'll try thought the next neighbor. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, may we enter? She announced behind a closed door. There was no reply except a faint snore. Maybe he's asleep, thought the third neighbor out loud. Let's try one more and then leave because it is not good manners to continue at the door. He quoted the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ who said, If one of you seeks permission to enter three times, but is not given permission, let him go back. We will follow the sunnah and take back this sack. The sack of sugar, with just barely a heap inside, was flat on the ground as the third neighbor tried once more at the door. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May we speak to you? Finally, the sugar neighbor awoke. He hopped to his feet, wiped his drool clean, and accepted their greetings of peace. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Come in and take off your shoes. The group entered with a smile, but that faded after a short while. They looked around and saw cakes, pies, desserts, and treats all half-eaten and buried in the kitchen sink. They noticed the neighbor did not look so well either. He had grown a large belly since the two years that have passed. What is going on? They all whispered and asked. <coughs> so you all are here, I'm assuming, for some sugar? I knew this day would come. I'm sure you're here just to take some. The neighbors were quiet, uncomfortable, unable to speak. They looked at one another and didn't utter a peep. The sugar neighbor continued while pacing. You're upset that I haven't given you what was promised. I can understand that. It all feels dishonest. But the thing is, if I keep giving away my sugar, then I would never have had enough for these special delicate treats. No one gets to make a proper sweet. We all have to make do with a pound or two. But now look around. See what I've experimented. It's all brand new. I have more sugar to use. Therefore, I am enjoying it to the fullest. And this is the proof. He pointed to a table that was covered in a red tablecloth. He slowly walked over and yanked the cover right off. Voila! This is the display of the possibilities of sugar when it's not just shared and taken and divided until there's none. The neighbors stared at the display. There were sparkling crystals of sugar topped on cakes and pastries, but something was off they could all clearly see. Flies hovered around these desserts and treats. A trail of ants could easily be seen. The sugar neighbor tried to shoo away the bugs and stomp away the ants, but his efforts didn't stand a chance. Ugh, oh no! Don't worry, they'll leave in a minute. All the sugar attracts these pests, but worry not, my display will be untouched without any defects. The sugar neighbor struggled to save his pastries and cakes, and ultimately he toppled over the table. What a tragic mistake. 
The display was now on the ground, smushed under the large belly of the neighbor who had a devastated frown. My sugar, my sugar, he cried and wailed. He sniffed and licked the ground, scooping up what he could. His fellow neighbors watched, frozen in place where they stood. Oh, when I give the sugar away, it feels like it'll never be enough. This sugar is precious, and eating treats without the right amount is just so tough. The neighbors bent down and helped the sugar neighbor up. They got on their knees and cleaned the mess. We'll stay and help you for as long as you please. Everyone was quiet in the kitchen, avoiding looking at the sugar neighbor. He sniffed and scooped up the mess from the table with a look of stress. Finally, one neighbor finally spoke. She wiped her hands with the end of her hijab. You were worried you wouldn't have enough, but I'll remind you of something that will get you through times that are rough. The Prophet wasallam has said that Allah said, O oh, son of Adam, spend and I shall spend on you. We know this to be true. No deed for the sake of Allah is lost. The goodness of sharing will come right back to you. Another neighbor finished mopping the floor. He hung the mop on the side and headed for the door. We all wish you well. When you are ready to join our food exchange again, let us know. But until then, farewell. The neighbors all exited, one by one, leaving while saying their salams and bidding the neighbor fi amanullah. They walked home with a big sigh of, <sighs> Before they could reach their street, they heard a holler wait, and knew that someone wait. was running bare feet. They turned and looked to see their sugar neighbor with a larger sack. This time it was already unpacked. You can guess what was inside of this sack. There were heaps and heaps of bags of sugar cubes neatly stacked. Oh, how much can one possibly eat? I want you all to take this and make your own treats. This sugar was always yours. Take it all. Allah will increase me. But you all accept, please, and forgive me. The neighbors all nodded and smiled. How did they end up with sacks of sugar today? How wild! The sugar neighbor felt lighter walking home. The next year's sugar amount is totally unknown. But at least he wasn't enjoying desserts alone. This was the right step to take. If Allah wills, maybe he'll still have enough sugar next year for his cake and milkshakes. Back at his home, the sugar neighbor entered to end his night, but he heard a large bang in the backyard that jolted him with fright. He peeked out the window and saw something had fell. It was a large honeycomb that dropped from the tree, oozing honey all on the ground the neighbor could see. The sugar neighbor ran out immediately with a jar in his hand. He scooped and collected this liquid sweetness, a rare kind of honey in its sugary uniqueness. He stared at this golden liquid treasure and whispered, Alhamdulillah, knowing in his heart that this was Allah doing his part. This is the end of season four. But I will be back with more. I hope you all enjoyed this somewhat rhyming story about sharing. Before we leave, I just wanted to read out loud the review that I received from the editors of Common Sense Media. This is what they had to say. A wonderful celebration of Muslim values and traditions tied into relatable stories for younger kids. This podcast offers a reflective space for Muslim families while also providing insight to non-Muslim listeners. Alhamdulillah for the recognition, but honestly, I just wanted to say that this could not have been possible without you guys. So thank you so much, dear kid listeners and dear parents who have been spreading the word and allowing this podcast to grow organically. 
inshallah, there will be more to come soon. Thank you all for listening. Assalamu alaikum.